Welcome to a brand new season of the Capcom Pro Tour. Welcome to the third straight season of No Neutral. I am one of your hosts, Big Hollywood, Rob TV, and I am joined with the super famous, the one million view per day YouTuber, godlike player, etc., etc. Man's like Brian Nerf. What up, bro? This is why I, this is why I like you, Rob, because you you just lie, and I love it. <laughs> you know how to lie to make you, someone you're doing feel the, good. You're doing so many, of you, bro. You cook it right now. I ain't gonna cap. You cook it. Uh, you know, is it me or is it uh, not only just a brand new season of No Neutral, but a brand new game? This is this is, this is unprecedented. Listen, we came into the scene here to talk about a beloved game, Street Fighter V, but it had grown and matured to that point, and we had kind of grown with the game. But now, everything. It's a fresh start, fresh game, fresh scene, and fresh season of Capcom Pro Tour. And uh, we're here to talk about not only the competitive scene, the game itself, and the players behind it all. And that said, CPT, it's back, baby. And of course, the big headline. Well, let's just get it out of the way right away. Over two million apprising. $1 million for first place for this season of the Capcom Pro Tour. You know whoever wins Capcom Cup this year, their lives are changed forever. That is history in the making. By far the largest pricing for any FGC event, bar none. So you love to see it. Uh, but yeah, Rob, I don't know who's going to qualify, but we got to go through the format to figure out who's going to make it into that position in the first place. Uh, uh, bro, the, so the format, y'all already know as far as uh, the way that we did it last year. Not Well, not we. It ain't like we Capcom. You know what I'm saying? We They just hit us up. They, they're, we're friends of Capcom. But the way that the CPT was last year, you already know we had the CPT online, and we also have now a few offline events, but it's primarily going to be online events. Um, the net code is phenomenal now. Thank goodness. You know what I mean? Thank you to the Developers, that's a whole nother ball game at this point. And mm -hmm. in every single region, you can either get in through winning your one CPT event or through winning your World Warrior event, uh, which is more of a, a long term, months long process, um, right. which, which has a ranking system and, and, all, and all of that. So for this year, there's going to be 18 CPT events across different regions and then 26 different qualifiers through the World Warrior program. So there's going to be a lot of people making it in through that over the course of the season, and uh, which I love to see because it gives time for the meta to develop. So, you know, Street Fighter V, like we said before, when this format came out, the game was a bit more mature, right? We still saw some development over the course of a season, but I think we're going to see a lot of things shake up from month one, like now, <laughs> in terms of World War qualifiers towards the end of the season. Uh, who knows what the game's even going to look like by that point? Because we're all we're all babies in the game, Street Fighter VI. There's so much more to learn. We also have three offline qualifiers. Of course, the EVO champion has qualified for Capcom Cup. If you, you know, listen, if you come out on top, over 7,000 competitors who are all in one uh, room for the weekend competing, you got to go to Capcom Cup. Of course, we have to see it. Uh, and that said, we also have another LCQ spot. Listen, can we talk about Jen real quick? How the LCQ qualifier went on the run of a lifetime in Capcom Cup 2022 to make it to grand finals of Capcom Cup? Zen was unknown. Let's get that out the gate. As, Completely except unknown. for people, only the people in his region. It was really DCQ, DCQ that was him hyping him up. up. It was poetic. Shout out to Problem X, one of the greatest Street Fighter players of all time, point blank, evil champion. But he runs up against Problem X. This guy's name on CFN used to be Fake Problem fake X. Problem X. Come on, how much more poetic can you get? He for has people to play who don't him. know, for people who don't know, we used to play, I don't know if you ran into him, I used to play Fake Problem X. He used to be in North America somewhere playing online. Really? Over here yes, I, know, I, I didn't know that. I played him in ranked and he was okay. Yeah, he was good. That was a few years back. And then to, to piece all of this together after the fact that the guy who just won the LCQ wow. used to be Fake Problem X, played against Problem X in the bracket, wins goes on to get second place in Capcom Cup and we used to all play him in ranked when he was younger a few years back and he was good but you know not winning going to grand finals at Capcom Cup good it was just like mind-blowing to, to find the lore so these these players can come out of nowhere when you think you found it all which the world warrior gives a lot more exposure to a lot more players from different regions and we got to see a lot more talent shine there was still more what? to uncover at the very end of Street Fighter 5's lifespan I, I honestly couldn't believe this story it's easy to get focused in on wherever you may be at at the moment
It's easy for us to think that, oh, we know all the best players. No, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, we've seen it with Zen. We didn't know this guy. He comes out, he's amazing. Now he's getting invited to all these big events as he deserves. Another example of that wasn't CBT, but it just happened this year in Street Fighter 6. Jobby M? Jobby M and Tokido is one of the, that I'm telling you, being there in that venue, bro, that was one of the craziest experiences I've ever seen in a fighting game. Like, you got to think the pressure of the world, of his, of his whole country, his whole continent even, is on his shoulders. The crowd is extremely hype. It's a random draw. He gets Tokido of all people, bro. It's like mm. a somber feeling, like dang, <laughs> as if he just lost. You know what I mean? You, it's, it's already you're, you're over. With. He gets at least one softball to like get a little momentum <laughs> yeah. going before yeah. the hometown hero has to go home. Instead, you got the the, the final boss round. You get one. the final boss out the gate and goes and actually cooks him. Man, that was a shout out to Tokido, fighting game god. But that's the type of stuff that you get to see when it comes to Street Fighter. When it comes to the Capcom Pro tour and especially with this format that actually highlights multiple regions but i actually want to take it back a little bit brian and go back to the fact that you just said we just had over seven thousand competitors for street fighter 6 at evo how do we get to this point bro we you just said we have like we we, we i don't want us to get desensitized to what you're saying bro over two million dollars one million dollars for first place. Mm -hmm. Do you know, Brian, when we first met, bro, we was <laughs> driving to Chicago to play in fighting uh, for scraps. Fighting for scraps, <laughs> driving hours and hours to compete and like that's crazy, bro. Uh, playing be in our before locals. I met you, I fought for less, man. We, we would go six deep in the car, you know, totally abiding all legal rules of the road, of course, <laughs> safely oh, traveling. Yeah. I know, <laughs> safely I know traveling how to the I was. venue. And uh, we would tell the concierge, of course, we we have uh, totally only two people in this hotel room, of course, and we're not <laughs> definitely not eight people deep, you know, sleeping on the floors, finding oh, any kind of open space. It. That's how it was back in the day, and it was all just fueled by passion. And I, I think our passion has been recognized by Capcom, and they've decided to to make the numbers reflect that. And I think it shows also with the entrance we're seeing with these tournaments right now. It's really honestly hard to believe where we've come. You know, uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about was well, Street Fighter 6. It's like we've all come together to play this game. There's people from all different parts of the fighting game community, and we all have given. It's not even just, you know, elephant in the room. OK, there's two million dollars on the line. Of course, that is uh, crazy. And that's, there's a lot going on with that. However, the reviews for the game have been phenomenal. Like we're all enjoying the game and loving the game. So it's dope to see, man. I would not be surprised to see someone like Sonic Fox, perhaps even possibly take a Capcom Cup. Somebody oh, yeah. that we don't know as a regular Street Fighter player. I think we've already seen the seeds of that for a long time. Like, listen, if you've been a long time Street Fighter player, I would say check the ego right now. Because <laughs> yes. you're going to be sorely disappointed when you start getting beat by some people who come from a different scene or come from a different genre entirely. If you can game, you can game. And that means you learned how to learn and you can learn to excel mm -hmm. at Street Fighter 6. I, I, I put this message out to anybody interested in street fighter and competing for that two million dollar prize pool i you can do it if you have demonstrated the ability to compete at the highest level of any game out there i don't care if it's you know chess or something it doesn't yeah. matter what it is if you demonstrated that ability to learn you can come to street fighter 6 and potentially win it all and if you're a long time street fighter player you better be training and staying on your toes i'm telling you a lot of people are going to be coming for your lunch money they just they're really trying to eat that lunch right now in my opinion my personal opinion i think street fighter 6 is a lot more like infinitely more exciting from a view viewers standpoint I, and because I think it's you know. exciting at all levels that's the one thing i really yeah. like about this game is i think that at every level of play there's something grounded and universal about the experience that everyone can latch on to because di drive impact is like the great mini game it's extremely powerful but it's extremely straightforward and you know if you utilize if you win the mini game it's the biggest dopamine rush right they do the big unblockable you press it back in time and react, you win. Oh, if not, you you're lose. Right. It's you're so right. simple. And so anyone from new challenger, iron, bronze to grandmaster, whatever rank they may or may not add in the future, right? To Evo champion, 
you're you have that unifying mini game, and no matter who you are, if you counter the drive impact, it, it does it feel feels good. good right? Yeah, but it it's feels so funny because it, it kind of makes you feel like you you punishing them for being a scrub, but as if you don't do it your damn self, like you you, you do DI all the time. You got you to. have to. I, I love it. Yeah, I, that's my. Dang, is that my favorite mechanic in it? You know what? Drive Rush is my favorite mechanic in the game, even though Drive Impact is my, is the, giving me the most dopamine. But when I say Drive Rush, I don't mean Drive Rush in neutral, I mean the combo extensions. Right. Which later on in the season, I might have to have a little apology to you, Brian, <laughs> for what you said about having more in depth fun you know more a bit more complex combos because i have been having a lot of fun with a lot of there these dj combos go. i'm not gonna lie it's Listen, been fun street it's fighter fun. has never <laughs> been just about the footsies doing the yeah. combos is fun i'm it's sorry fun. It's, it's fun it's super fun but especially when the ones me, you might drop it's fun of course of course yeah if you're going that little bit extra mile that's that's what i love about the drive system in general is that you're constantly always playing this balancing act too with your your meter management so it's not only is this combo complex but the reward is worth it should i go for it it's also is it even worth the meter uh should i do a different route that prioritizes something else and like you're constantly playing this balancing act with the drive meter which is a super engaging mechanic so you can never just do your can combo sequence right it's street fighter 5 you land the hit in this situation sure you have super meter to manage but for the most part it's not as devastatingly uh, high to burn your meter you know what i mean like you're you're saying yeah. do i save up for the, the super or do i burn it on ex and with the tri meter it's do i burn it on the combo or do i keep this alive so i don't die yeah <laughs> because if you go to burn out you can die bro and dry rush is super flexible i think dry rush even in neutral i think the mechanic uh defensively people are still figuring out how to utilize it and defend against it but also offensively how to use it i think the mechanic is one of the most flexible mechanics ever introduced in a street fighter in terms of application and defense so i think dry rush is actually a super sick mechanic uh and i i, I, I love the dry rush combos this game really rewards you for having the hours put in there mm -hmm. because i think in five it was easier to as you said like uh get to that point of your subconscious is going to do the combo now right. there's so much more to consider with the drive meter or was this a punish counter or you know you, you might have hit somebody was it a counter hit was it a punish counter and then being able to optimally follow up based off of that right there right. Uh, it's it's a lot more in depth so uh yeah the way that the drive gauge system was done said a chef's kiss 10 out of 10 perfect i like i said maybe drive rush is the only thing people debate on whatsoever but I, I get good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. how I feel right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's my. The game that's is my balanced, bro. It, the game is balanced. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and I think, uh, I think feeling powerful is a huge part of the game. And I think that was a great thing that they've done up front. I mean, speaking of feeling powerful, we haven't even touched on on modern controls. <laughs> <laughs> oh my ooh, god. Ooh. And yeah, even, bro, when more yeah, controls were announced, that. we thought that it would be like, okay, they explained to us what it, what it is and, uh, and everything, right? But we thought that pretty much it would be not viable. Like, it's only for people to learn the game, but you can't really play it in tournament because you're not really going to be, your character's going to get too weak. That has been proven entirely wrong, which has been one of the most fascinating developments of Street Fighter VI. People are cooking with modern controls. Right. There was a hint. That, I don't want to completely you know maybe i'm wrong looking back on what my opinion was but i feel like there was still that seed of like this might be good <laughs> in my thoughts about modern controls because the ability to do special moves one button or supers one button that yeah. is inherently going to be super powerful in the hands of a high level player and i, I always find the debate about modern controls so funny because uh, I think what gets lost is the context of where we are concerned about modern controls. I'm not concerned about someone, you know, a weaker player beating me with modern controls. I'm concerned about a player who's already going to beat me with classic, mm, then picking modern and beating yeah. me worse. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's yeah. what I'm concerned about. Suddenly it's like, oh, I can just react to anything you do with my one button super. I'm a little bit concerned about that. So we've seen a lot of players, especially in Japan, taking modern controls very seriously, using it at high the highest level and high level competitions in Street Fighter League, players like Shudo, players like um, Haitani, going on massive win streaks with I think, like a, I think it's like a 70 game, a 70 yeah. plus game win streak in <laughs> yeah. Japan with Haitani modern controls. Doing that and then Shudo uh, going to big tournaments, grand finals using modern Marissa. So it's a real control scheme. It has its pros and cons, just like you know any, any other choice you make in this game, any character you pick, any controller peripheral you pick, pros and cons with everything. In modern, it's real. So I'm waiting to see who's going to be like in like more like the North American scene, who's going to finally 
pick it up and do some work because I think there's some untapped potential there for sure. Definitely some untapped potential, but there is a region that we are going to be watching today that I believe has the exact same thing. Some untapped potential. We've seen Travis Styles. We've seen uh, ROF, Somniac, Rumors, you name it. All kinds of players. Uh, what? Ghost Chips. I can mm -hmm. go on. BK Sama. What we doing mm -hmm. here, bro? Goldie. All kinds mm -hmm. of godlike players over there. And we're about to see the continuation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first installment of the Capcom Pro Tour 2023 for Street Fighter 6. Oh, see. Yeah, Neo!